My husband just went on a sale during his lunch hour, so I have a short amount of time to talk to you about the Artist Way and what I think moving forward with it. I was about to do the Artist Way again. It's something I did in 2020. It's a 12-week program. It's a book written by Julia Cameron, and it walks you through that process of becoming unstuck or rediscovering your creative self. And it's called Artist Way, but it's not for just artists. It's for everybody. It's for entrepreneurs. It's for moms. It's like she has even books that are geared towards specific niches within the genre. I did it in 2020 and it led me on this trajectory that found myself on a sailboat on the Salish Sea in the San Juan Islands with my family. It's been an incredible journey and I really, really loved it. Ultimately, I decided I'm not going to do it again and I'll tell you why in a second. But that's not to say that you shouldn't do it. If you're thinking about doing it, obviously, if you're looking at this video, you're searching around YouTube to see what other people's experiences are. You can find past videos of mine or even my videos going through the whole process. I'd love to chat about it so you can comment below and ask questions or whatever and I'm happy to respond. I'm not doing it because I decided in the month of August I was going to take the time to see if I could commit to it because it is a big commitment. It's an emotional commitment. It's a time commitment and it's something that I don't like starting a challenge and then like giving up halfway. I wanted to be able to go through it and complete it. You have to really think about whether or not you have the time. So I was doing morning pages consistently through the month of August to see if that's something that I could do again plus the exercises plus plus the reading, plus the artist dates and everything. And like being able to toil with whether or not my life is gonna change that kind of thing. The same things kept coming up where at the end of it, I looked it over and I thought, this is ridiculous. I already know what I should be doing. And if I do the artist way or any kind of other little things like that, it's a form of resistance. Like the war of art says, Stephen Pressfield, me, just procrastinating or finding other avenues to explore rather than doing what I know I should be doing. And there was like consistently four items that kept popping. And I keep finding myself like Googling like different ideas or like going on all these weird tangents. I should just sit down and do what it is that I want to do rather than thinking, okay, um, what are the other possibilities? You know, in case I try doing what I want to do and then I fail and I'll feel bad. No, just committing to doing it. With that being said, even though I'm not going to do the program, I was still thinking about like things like the artist way. There are so many habits and tools that go along with this program that you can bring into your regular day life. I wrote down, I think there's like seven or eight and I wanted to go through all of them quickly with you because if you're not going to do the 12 week program, you can still incorporate the ideas behind it into your creative life. The first one is morning pages. Morning pages is something that's like an obvious something that you can do, but it really is a helpful tool. Cause like I said, I could see repetition within what it was that I was writing on. It's a sweeping of the mind each morning so you can find your to-do list, things that are priorities, things that you're not wanting to do. One of the things that I noticed in 2020 was a lot of frustrations I'd write. And I've seen other videos on YouTube from the artist way about it would aggravate people sometimes and it was a lot of it because you're writing out these angry thoughts or frustrations or things that you don't like and rather than focusing on it over and over you can turn on a switch in your mind and say oh these are coming up often what can I do to solve this what can I do to change things and then also one of the other things is writing out your emotions so whether it is angry or maybe something a period of gratitude you're switching off that whatever you would channel your emotions into whether it's alcohol or food I don't know other things that would relieve that anxious feeling, you're then putting it all on paper and you just feel better. Apart from morning pages, the other obvious one is the artist date. And that's the weekly commitment to go out and have fun, try something new, get out of your comfort zone. And within that, I made a fun card deck. So if you're someone that's doing my fun cards, then you can incorporate that into your your card decks too where each week you get like a little activity that you can do that might get you out of your comfort zone and allows you to plan for those things upcoming i'm actually using my card deck now to do my morning pages just for fun i don't know if it's actually something that i'm gonna continue doing but i did three cards front and back and it took me 18 minutes so i'll try it again tomorrow i just thought it was like a fun and different way to do morning pages rather than the journals which are pretty expensive and also bulky and like heavy a lot of my morning pages are junk they don't really matter matter and then also for the ones that do matter I can pull out quotes and save them rather than going through a bunch of junk trying to find the good stuff. Walking 
is one that she recommends within a couple of her books to process what it is that you wrote in your morning pages and that's so helpful because it's forced quiet space you're recognizing things in your walk you're maybe seeing people i wrote down flourishes i don't know if this is the word that i should be using for this but the idea of this like grand gesture or a big like attraction look at me kind of thing i don't know if she calls this out in the book but ever since doing the artist way i incorporate more of this into my life i used to be very minimalist i used to use like pencil and like keep it clean and no doodles. I didn't like stickers. I still don't really like stickers. Incorporating more fun and beauty, I guess, into your life, whether it's in decorations or art pieces, getting creative in little small spaces, or even in how you dress. Oh, and like collages. Little things that you would think, oh, that's a waste of time, or I don't want to call attention to this nerdy part of me. But in doing it, it just, just feels fun and inspires you in other ways. Another thing is awareness. This is actually one of the biggest things that morning pages especially provides you the ability to see repetition for patterns it also allows you to give credibility to the little voice inside that says there's this idea or you should do this like I was saying in my experience that I kept seeing this over and over in my morning pages like oh you should do this or I need to when I have a tendency to just like, shoo it away because it makes me feel like I would be, number one, what if it fails? And number two, this is not normal. Also within awareness, there's this idea of synchronicity. She talks a lot about synchronicity. And in my morning pages or in the fun deck, I have a space for recognized synchronicities within the week because sometimes I forget about them. She has this idea of pay attention to what's coming up and what's being repeated. Are they signs? I think it's an interesting concept, the idea of synchronicity. Diana Pasalka talks a little bit about that in American, in her book, gosh, what was it? American Cosmos. She coming back a couple more things sobriety is another habit that you can take away from the artist state it's mirrored after the 12-week program for aa she talks a few times about the idea of the starved or the tortured artist and that in order to be creative you have to be a little like sad or a little mad or whatever it is sobriety really does help as far as making clear decisions and staying focused and recognizing what it is that you truly want and then finally eliminating distractions she has an exercise i think where it's like a week you go without podcasts or television shows or anything that's like from the outside coming in and it makes you really think about what it is that you're ingesting and you think oh is this what i think or is this what all the people around me think and it makes you a little bit more critical but it also allows you the ability to develop your own voice so if you're writing doing things without that outside noise then it, you kind of think I think again a little bit more clear so I think the overarching theme of all of this is that the artist way definitely does help you become clearer I hope those habits are something that you can incorporate I hope that you do the artist way if you haven't yet I'll find a different solution than holding up this tiny mic because it looks really stupid 